the uh, Vikings are, they hired a new defensive coordinator. Yep. Ed Donatel. Thank you. I was going to look that up quick. That Ed Donatel, because um, Andre Patterson is gone, he was signed elsewhere. Giants. Giants um, D-line coach. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and the other guy that they were interested in signed elsewhere as well. Um, they were also interested in a new special teams coordinator who ended up signing with the Jags, yeah. Heath Farwell. He used to be he's played for us, right? Heath yeah. Farwell. He was with yeah. the Bills last year. He was going to be the interim head coach at one point, but then Brian Dayball was able to he was able to clear whatever was the issue and was otherwise Heath sure. Farwell was going to be the interim coach. Anyway, Heath Farwell went to the Jags, so they lost out on a special teams guy they wanted. Lost out on Andre Patterson staying. He's going. So they got a new defensive coordinator. That defensive coordinator plays a 3 4 defense, which means the yep, defense he's Vikings. been working for Vic Fangio, which has been rumored for the rumored for that position too for the last 10 years. So I was going to know a lot of what Vic Fangio knows, a lot yep. of what concepts he does. But yeah, so most likely going to move to a 3 4. What does that mean for the Vikings? Um, well, Zimmer was transitioning to a 3 4. He ran more of a hybrid set similar like the Patriots where they run 3-4 and 4-3 but most of the time they had four down linemen no matter how many it was more of a it was like a nickel dime quarter set as opposed to like a 3-4 they'd always almost always have four down linemen and then it was the linebackers would either be two or three as opposed to four yeah. and then it would always be if there was like a fourth linebacker it'd be more like a sub linebacker or a nickel wouldn't always be like it, this is more right. of a traditional Three, four, nose tackle and two defensive ends, as opposed to two D tackles. Like a stand no up nose tackle, stand up pass rushing outside linebacker, like. and then you have an edge rusher, and then two traditional middle linebackers. I was listening um, to some other like former NFL players. I actually started doing like some research on like X's and O discussion. There was. Uh, I can't remember what the name of the podcast was, but I listened to an episode discussing the differences before the four, between a 4-3 and a 3-4 and what uh, certain players need. It sounds like the big consistency in all these from what I've gathered in terms of research and in terms of what other people have reported and in terms of my own knowledge, Eric Kendricks is the big question mark because Eric Kendricks is the position, is the guy who he is a 3-4, he is a 4-3 middle linebacker. He is not a 3-4 middle linebacker. He, yeah. he just doesn't, apparently that's just, it just, but well, it's based on what I know, what I've listened to, that he just doesn't fit the scheme. Um, I was even listening to a former Viking, Ben Lieber, who has his own podcast, talking about how Eric Kendricks is all of his deficiencies, like where his weak points are, even though there's not many, where his weak points are is where you need the strengths to be of a 3-4 middle linebacker. But all of Anthony Barr's best points are what you'd want in a 3-4 middle linebacker. Right. It's really, they're talking about how moving to a 3-4 means you should retain Barr and consider moving Kendricks. I don't think you move Kendricks. I think Kendricks is smart enough to figure it I out. I was just going to say, I think he's smart enough to adapt to what you need him to. He's I don't know, he's one of the best middle linebackers in football. So, But I think moving to a 3-4 definitely <clears> means... <throat> But having a 4-3, I was totally fine getting rid of Barr. But moving to a 3-4, if Barr's willing to sign for a good number, you should at least make an offer. Because, right. Like, not only does he's your second best good. linebacker, like whether you like to admit it or not, he's your second best linebacker. So, however, Vigil, Vigil, he can Vigil was good for us. Yeah, he can he can alternate between that D end and outside linebacker spot. I he's think quick. Yeah, and I think that Daniil might be one of those guys that gets moved. A lot of people are saying that there's a lot of teams that have this like an early pick um, this year, and you know, like a prime defensive end usually yields some high picks. Right. Um, but with Daniil's like injury stuff, it's it kind of depends. I still think you get a high pick. Like I if, think so too. I when don't he, think a first is out of the question at all. When like, he is healthy, he has Miles Garrett numbers. He has yeah. these like defensive player of the year yeah. stats. Yeah. So right. when he's, if you can get a team to realize that that plays a four three that is in the higher, I think right. I think you can get an early pick. Um, I do think that is the that's the odd man out more than Kendricks. Right. I think Daniil is not a three four defensive end. He's strong enough to be one, but if anything, he's more of a 4-3 outside linebacker, and I don't know if he should ever be dropping into coverage. Yeah, I think that the Vikings need to get some different defensive linemen. I think moving to a 3-4 means that first pick went from being an O-line or corner to 
D line or corner. Like you might have to sacrifice an early O line pick again. Well, I mean, and, and thinking about it, if you can get Mason Cole back, if you can bring Mason Cole back, which you traded a sixth round pick for him, but you know, why wouldn't you? He plays better than Bradbury. Um, and then you have Wyatt Davis potentially be what we all think Wyatt Davis can be. You don't really need O line early. Like you don't, you know what I mean? If I like were you to, have- my number one choice would be a guard. Honestly, right. like my number one choice would be a guard. If there is, if the top guard is available at, say, you trade Daniil and get an early first, that's earlier than their current pick. If a top, if the top guard is available on left or right side, you take him. I've seen Jets, um, Jets and Giants both been linked. The Giants have five and seven, and the Jets have ten. I could see Daniil for the tenth, but I think the yeah. Jets need picks more than they need. Daniil. So I would I would expect the Giants would say Giants seven, have Patterson too. I would say so. seven for Daniil and they'd, they'd probably ask for our first in return. Yeah, what I heard was like, what, what I was like, well, we could get a, probably a mid pick if we throw in a late pick. So like a one three for uh Daniil and a six or something like that. That's what I've seen assumed. Well, anyway, I do think Daniil's the odd man out. I think Harrison Smith's still good there. Um, it's more it's the front seven. You're we're gonna have to see a huge change of personnel yeah. because all of our guys, except for Barr. What do corners look like? What kind of corners are you looking for in that kind in, of in a three four? You're still gonna be running a lot of nickel and a lot less dime which is good and but what you're looking for i think patrick Peterson becomes a really good number two because at four three you're asking your corners to be man to man a lot more and three four you can play a lot of zone because you have that extra linebacker out there and probably right. an athletic linebacker which toss this in there chaz surratt way better in a three four than a four three just want right. to throw that out there yeah um forgot about him honestly yeah i think chaz surratt becomes a four three a uh, three-four outside linebacker, all of a sudden, way better than a four-three defense. Vigil defensive. can move around. Vigil's quick. Kendricks mm-hmm. is quick. You, you could genuinely put Vigil at defensive end with Surratt outside of him, yeah. if you wanted to. I don't know if Vigil would be willing to get down on a stance, but yeah, I, I think that there are things they could do there. But corners, uh, you have a lot more ability to be flexible with man versus zone as opposed to relying on as much man-to-man coverage okay. so about like bynum Trey Wayne wanted would, to see. Have, would have been really good in this sure i think yeah i think bynum would be solid i i based on development i really don't think any of our corners i think cam dancer is going to get helped out because he i mean like i know we wanted to see cam bynum get some more time back there at safety i would so like, like cam bynum to get more time so um, Bynum becomes a coverage safety as opposed to a guy that has to go up into the box at all. Right. Harrison Smith gets to stay in coverage more often. So it, right. it really becomes helpful for our current defensive backs and really hard on our current linemen and linebackers. Sure. So our front seven is going to need a complete rehaul, but we know who to target for D backs now. Right. Interesting. Um, I love the idea of a 3-4. I think 3-4s are much easier to run as a defense. I always wanted to be a 3-4 outside as opposed to I was always a 4-3 outside linebacker. I always wanted to be a 3-4 because blitzing was fun. You really just like Everson Griffin is actually a really good 3-4 outside linebacker in his prime. I I don't know about now, but like he always loved dropping in coverage. You just, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I don't want to go too much into it, but um yeah, that like excites me for possibly like. I know we've got some guys we drafted. Like, what can DJ Wanham, Kenny Willickis, Kenny Willickis is like a linebacker. You know what I mean? Patrick Jones. I don't know. Some of these other guys, we young guys we drafted. Like, what's their future too? I so, think a lot of those guys you're potentially going to see moved. Um, like DN to outside linebacker. No, like traded. Okay. Traded or cut, because a lot of these guys that that defensive end to outside linebacker is a lot easier for the athletic guys but that defensive end to defensive end or defensive tackle to nose tackle is just a whole new world right i just i think michael pierce is a, like made to be a nose tackle so it makes a lot of sense but all of a sudden dalvin tomlinson becomes a defensive end instead of a defensive tackle or becomes a nose tackle that swaps out it's so it's so sheldon richardson is a natural 3-4 defensive end but he prefers 4-3 defensive end it's gonna be weird man it's it's (laughs) our front seven is not built for 3-4 so we're gonna have to see a lot of change sure uh the other vikings news 
kind of. I want to say I want to say that the the Vikings did retain Keenan McCardell. So we were like Andre Patterson, Keenan McCardell, Ryan Ficken. Yeah. Right after we did that podcast, Ryan Fick, I looked it up and Ryan Ficken signed somewhere else. So I was like, shit. Yeah. Um, Andre Patterson's gone, but they were like our best player. Uh, our face of our franchise right now, Justin Jefferson, loves Keenan McCardell. Adam Thielen likes Keenan McCardell. He developed KJ Osborne, Amir Smith Marset. Like both of those guys made jumps. Yeah. Uh, he's back. So, right. which, I mean, that's all, that's really good news. That's super good news.